And uh, if you have a bulletin, feel free to uh, get out that half sheet of paper that's in there. Um, the title of the sermon is called Why Christmas? And um, if you were going to ask that on the street, you probably would get all kinds of different answers. And some of those answers might be dependent on your age or your religious upbringing or lack of religious upbringing, but you'd probably get a lot of different answers to that. Well, today I want to take us to a non-traditional passage uh, to talk about why we have Christmas. And so you'll see Hebrews 2, 14 and 15, and you'll see that on that little sheet. And I'd like us to read it together, if we would, out loud. So if we could have that up on the screen, but it's also on your sheet. It says... Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives." Now, if you have a pencil or a writing utensil, I'd like you to do something on that, on your sheet. Um, I would like you to circle the phrase, therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same. If you just take a pencil and just circle that phrase, and then somewhere just put a little one in the circle. Okay, and then the second one that you're going to circle is the next phrase, that through death. Just those three words, circle that and put a little number two. And then the third phrase, he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil. Circle that one, put a little three. And then the last one, and might free those who through the fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. Circle that one and put a little four. I want to show you this morning, and now you can flip your sheet over. I want to show you this morning four reasons why we have Christmas very quickly. Reason number one, we have Christmas for Jesus to become human. For Jesus to become human. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, we, we have flesh and blood, we are human. Therefore, he himself likewise also partook of the same. So he became flesh and blood, and he became human just like us. And there's an obvious question to every one of these points. And the obvious question for this is, why did Jesus do that? Why did Jesus become human? Why did he leave his heavenly home, that place of great paradise, to come to this earth and take on a body that can uh, inquire great suffering at times? Why did he do that? Which leads into reason number two, for Jesus to die. For Jesus to die, that phrase, that through death. And so Jesus came to die or that something might happen through his death. So Jesus had to become human first before he could die. You got to be human before you can die. So he became human first so he could die. And so up to this point, we have Christmas. We have Christmas because Jesus became human like us so that he could die. And the obvious question on this one is, why did Jesus need to die? Why did he come to die? What, what was the purpose of his death? Which leads to reason number three, and that is that through Jesus' death, he rendered powerless the devil that had the power of death. So through Jesus' death on the cross, he canceled out the power of Satan and therefore made him powerless over God's family. So we have Christmas because Jesus became human like us so he could die, and through his death, he took away Satan's power of over death over God's family. So there's a couple obvious questions. One that's not there. One would be, well, how do I, how do I be one of God's family? And the other one is this. How, how does his death do this? How, what's the mechanism that makes it possible that Satan's power is taken away from those who are a part of God's family? That fear of death. Which leads into reason number four. For Jesus to free us. For Jesus to free us, as it says there, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. So Jesus became human so that he could die to break the devil's power over us, and we needed to be freed from the fear of death. The fear of death and slavery to that fear. So Jesus came to save, and he came to free, and he came to redeem, and he came to deliver us from the devil's snare to hold you in the fear of death. 
And we have Christmas because Jesus became human like us so he could die. And through his death, he took away Satan's power of death over God's family. And he made a way to deliver us from the fear of death so that we might have peace of everlasting life in God's presence. And that's why we have Christmas. Jesus' purpose of coming as the Christ child, and you will see that played out in just a few minutes here. In a feeding trough, a manger among the animals would later die on a rough wooden cross after being severely beaten and whipped and mocked, according to the very detailed plan that we call the gospel. And it was planned out by God from the very beginning. It was prophesied in great detail by the prophets of the Old Testament. And it was lived out by Jesus and instructed to his disciples over and over again the purpose of his coming. It was not by chance that Jesus came. And that he lived and he died and he rose again. So why do we have Christmas? Well, we have Christmas because it was God's plan for us to have Christmas. We needed to be delivered from the slavery of the fear of death. And that came by Jesus coming as one of us, becoming human so he could die. And that Jesus broke the power of the devil over God's family. And here's the high point right here. Here's the whole point. Because he didn't stay dead. And so he led the way for his followers to know that when we die, physically die, that we will be forever in his presence. We will not stay dead. We'll be alive as he is alive. So I humbly come to the manger in surrender to the one, Jesus, who can cancel my debt of sin through his death and resurrection. And I see Jesus opening up my eyes to, to him that I need to be delivered from that. Therefore, I confess and I repent to follow after him. And I can truly rest knowing that my eternity was paid for by that little baby in the manger. And I follow the example of the wise men. As they bow before them, him bringing their gifts, I bring my very life, my gift to him as an offering to be used by him. And understanding this makes it a very Merry Christmas. Those who have a very Merry Christmas are those who know why. Why Christmas? So as the account is read and sung and the children uh, come into place, uh, I would hope that you would ponder those thoughts. At the end of the scene, when all of the children are in place, you are going to have an opportunity to come forward and to just ponder and think about this baby coming and why he came. And I would encourage you, when you come forward, to stop. Just to gaze and think. And maybe, maybe kneel. Maybe say a prayer. Um, be thankful for what he did. But I can't help but think that there might be some who come up to the manger and say yes to Jesus. Yes, I see you for who you are. And I want to know that the power of Satan has been broken because I'm one of your family.